10 million years after they first emerged, tetrapods, having already evolved the biting jaw, were well suited to make the move onto land. And once they made the move, their success was phenomenal. Fast forward 240 million years, and thousands of species had inherited this new biting jaw. By the age of dinosaurs, survival was a bigger, faster, stronger game. Big-jawed meat-eaters on the offensive, and small-jawed herbivores on the defensive. Carnivorous dinosaurs evolved better weapons for killing. More powerful jaws, teeth that were more effective for slicing through flesh, bigger claws, and so on. Herbivorous dinosaurs evolved defenses against carnivorous dinosaurs. Gigantic sizes, horns, spikes, or armor. In many ways, the age of dinosaurs can be thought of as an evolutionary arms race. T-Rex certainly looks like the most ferocious jawbiter of all time. A typical T-Rex jawbone was six foot long, stuffed with up to 50 long, curved teeth at any one time. Like sharks, if those teeth broke off, T-Rex just grew them back. But a rising scientific theory claims that T-Rex was really a wimp, whose arms were too short, legs were too slow, and eyes were too weak to bring down moving animals. A few paleontologists have argued that Tyrannosaurus rex was a scavenger rather than a hunter. These scientists envisioned Tyrannosaurus rex not as the fierce hunter that we all grew up with, but rather wandering across the landscape, sniffing out dead carcasses, something like a 10,000 pound vulture. Gregory Erickson is a paleobiologist and a champion of T-Rex. He is having none of it. Tyrannosaurus rex arguably was, was the most lethal terrestrial animal ever to have existed could easily bite through a bone like this. Erickson first became involved in the T-Rex debate in the 1990s, when as a graduate student he analyzed this rare find, a triceratops pelvis riddled with 58 bite marks. By matching casts of the indents to fossilized T-Rex teeth, he identified T. rex as having eaten the pelvis. At first glance, the bite marks seemed to support the scavenger theory. T. rex clearly took its time with this meal, nibbling the meat off the bone. But Erickson saw a chance to use the bite marks to establish a minimum bite force for T. rex and to prove that T. rex's teeth could do more than just scratch a bone. The teeth of Tyrannosaurus rex really stand out among dinosaur teeth. This animal had the largest teeth of any dinosaur. This is the root, this is the crown. So over half of this tooth was actually usable by this animal. So we have six inches of tooth that they could work with. And they had a very interesting profile to them. Reminiscent of, say, a steak knife or something like that. They even have the serrations on the front and the back. But this really isn't like a steak knife. If you look down at the end of the tooth, you see that it is much more rounded. It's shaped more like a railroad spike or a lethal banana even. Hmm. Erickson had the teeth and the bite marks. He set out to recreate for the first time ever the actual bite of T-Rex. There were hurdles that he had to overcome, such as how big was the tooth that made the marks, which tooth was it, and the trickiest question of all, how could he build a meaningful replica of a T-Rex tooth? Erickson used T-Rex's reptile connections as a clue. All reptile teeth are made of the same materials. They have an outer enamel shell, which is a really hard material. And inside that, the bulk of the tooth is dentine, which is a type of bone, essentially. And together, those two tissues act as a rigid body. Our replica here had to be as stiff and as hard as actual Tyrannosaur teeth. For the purposes of our experiment, we used bronze and aluminum. Bronze is a common casting material, and with the addition of aluminum, it made it a harder structure. 
So we had the size covered here. We also had the material properties. Ericsson fixes his T-Rex tooth to a hydraulic press. His plan is to measure precisely how much power it would take to make the half-inch divot seen in the Triceratops bone. A modern cow pelvis stands in for the prey. The microstructure of cow pelvic bones are identical to the bones from Triceratops. All right, reset the display scope. Through trial and error, Zero force. Ericsson adjusts the torque until he has a precise match for the power of the bite. Actuator off. And running. Fire away. Fire. Jeez. Punch straight through it, Paul. Oh. Man, you wouldn't want to get bitten by that. How much force, Paul? About 3,000 pounds. 3,000 pounds. Using the average from many trials, Ericsson's result was 3,400 pounds of bite force. This matches today's crocodiles for the most powerful jaws on earth, and that was just the beginning. Probably both sides of the dentition were engaged when this animal was biting too, so it's probably twice that much, which would put Tyrannosaurus as having bite forces at approximately twice that of a large alligator today. It doesn't mean the Tyrannosaur was biting at full force. I suspect that Tyrannosaurus could generate bite forces perhaps three, four, five times greater Ericsson's work doesn't prove that T-Rex didn't occasionally scavenge, but it does show that this ferocious giant clearly had all the tools for the job of top predator.